obviously the Golden Gophers, their, their strength is running the football. They've racked up more than 300 yards rushing in all three of their games, led by Mo. The man's got 460 plus yards so far and seven touchdowns on the season. And I agree, their, their strength is our strength. They're running the ball, we're stopping the run. And so, you know, it's the, um, you know, irresistible force and the immovable object. Something's got to win these two teams play. While they're not prolific through the air, their quarterback, Tanner Morgan, uh, is completing over 70% of his passes so far in the season. He's got over 600 yards so far in the season and four scores. But I did the numbers and they only pass about 18 times a game. So it's really not the focal point of their offense. And like you mentioned, with their stud wide receiver out, it's next man up for them. And their next man up is not all that much. Their next five wide receivers have combined for 25 catches so far on the year. So about five per receiver. And just to give you guys an idea, you know, our, our number two and number three wide receivers, Keon Coleman and Trey Mosley, that's the two of them combined so far on the year. They've combined for, I think, 24 catches so far out of those two. So obviously the passing game is not as big in their offensive scheme. They are very focused on running the football. And if our front seven does their job, which they didn't really do last week, <laughs> they do a much better job of it this week, then it plays right into Michigan State's hands where we should be able, as great as Ibrahim has been throughout his entire career at Minnesota, and it feels like he's been there for about seven or eight years now, we should be able to limit his total yardage, his yards per carry, all that stuff, take, take advantage of the fact that they're not as prolific through the air and can't take advantage of our weakest point of our team by far, which is our secondary. Yeah, it's also uh, it's also Chris Ottman Bell, not Tyler. Not not sure where I got Tyler from, but after I said it, it didn't sound right, so I just want to make that, <laughs> that small correction there. The Minnesota star wide receiver is going to be out. And you said it, the pass rush for Michigan State the front seven really but the pass rush in specific has to be better to take some of the pressure off that secondary and off those cornerbacks because if minnesota has all day to throw while they don't have such a great passing attack and it's not the number one thing that they want to do on offense these are still d1 level kids at receiver and they're going to be able to get away from the cornerbacks from the safeties god forbid they got a linebacker on them looking at you kale holiday <laughs> like they're going to be able to run away from them if the quarterback just has all day back there to throw the ball. So the the pass rush certainly has to be better, and the entire I mean the entire defense obviously has to be better. I would like to see more blitzes this week than what we saw last week against Washington. I think especially if they are going to focus on running the ball, you know they'll probably try to establish the run early. I'm not sure if it's something that Minnesota is going to stick with throughout the entire game. You know we'll have to wait and see uh, on Saturday, of course. But I would like to see more blitzes to kind of clog some of those running lanes, force Minnesota to pass because it's not what they want to do, and you know get get to the quarterback a couple a couple times or at least make them make some quick throws and hopefully you can force some of those turnovers. You know Minnesota's done a good job as you alluded to protecting the ball this year, but they also haven't faced anybody. So hopefully Michigan State is able to give them more of a challenge on defense than what Minnesota's seen so far. And if you're a Michigan State fan, you just hope that the Gophers don't respond well to it. Now, I guess what scares you is if Minnesota does still sit there and like have all day to throw, right? And then Michigan State, they if they go zone again and they just don't blitz anybody, it'll probably make for easier running lanes for, uh, for Ibrahim. And while Washington wasn't so successful running the ball against Michigan State, and Michigan State played a lot of that, you know, back up on the zone and just load guys up in, up in coverage, it didn't work. But that was the idea, is to make the passing game harder. You know, Ibrahim is a better running back than anybody that Washington had going out there. And I think he'll be able to take advantage of some of that open space that the Husky running backs weren't able to. So I think you just have to play Minnesota differently than what Michigan State did to Washington. Of course, the nightmare scenario is that Minnesota is able to both run and pass the ball, and then you're risking saying you can't do anything. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I expect it to be a tough game, kind of like a, a drag-it-out game. I don't know that there's going to be so many points you know, scored. I don't think they're going to light up the scoreboard or anything. But uh, I think it'll be a close game, and it'll you know be something that you're going to have to be at your TV for all four quarters, or you, know, you might miss the, the game-changing play. 
So the betting line on this, like you said, Minnesota is minus three. The over under is 51. By the way, I forgot to mention this. The game is at 3.30 on Big Ten Network for those that didn't know when it was going to be played. You sound like you'd be betting on the under in this game if you don't think very many points are going to be scored with two offenses that have shown that they can put up numbers in different ways. You know, like you mentioned with this game last week, the one bright spot for Michigan State was Peyton Thorne looking like the Peyton Thorne that we saw most of last year and not what we saw the first few games of this season. He was more on point. Keon Coleman was great in that game. You know, Thorne was connecting with him pretty easily. So you sound like you're not expecting as many points in this game. So you're going to take the under that 51? Yeah, I think. But I mean, 51 is still pretty low. But if Michigan State can win like 30 to 20, which I think they can, then obviously that would be, you know, less than 51 points. You also thought Michigan State could win double digits last week in Seattle. <laughs> I did, and that did not happen. So, who, who cares what I think? Maybe just go the opposite way. <laughs> now, uh, as far as the Spartan offense, the, Minnesota's defense is – the numbers look great obviously again they played new mexico state they played west illinois and they played colorado so they haven't played a team that is put together offensively like michigan state is so michigan state should be able to get back on track from last week where really nothing looked good the running game especially looked terrible broussard looked awful made mistake after mistake picked the wrong side of thorn on a handoff slipped in the end zone for a safety it just it didn't look good him and Berger have to get back to what we saw the first couple weeks where they were combining for 170 plus yards and uh you know and doing the damn thing so on that side they need to step it up we need thorn to be the thorn we saw last week to combined with a prolific running game that we think we have and if all that comes together and if Michigan State does indeed shut down the run and do enough against the pass I agree with you Michigan State can win this game by double digits I don't think that's gonna happen I think this is going to be a 3-4 point game either way I'm still not sure if you know Michigan State wins this thing 31-28 or loses this thing 28-24 it's it's kind of hard to pick because I don't know who we're getting in green and white this Saturday but if Thorne is on his game and the running game is back to being competent we should win this football game I I think we should win as well but I thought we should, <laughs> should win last week too and that didn't you know end up working out but I think a lot you're right does depend on who is playing for Michigan State the offense is you know much less deadly when Jaden Reed isn't playing and defense of course isn't as good when Jacob Slade isn't playing now obviously right Minnesota's without their top wide receiver as well so it's not like oh Michigan State had all these injuries which is why you know they're not going to win this game both teams are dealing with injuries but it's it's really just a matter of if any of these guys can suit up to play you know we know Altman Bell is is not going to play but some of the other guys we're not so sure of and if Michigan State can get anybody back really it, sh- it would go a long way in helping them you know get back on track another Mel Tucker stat for Michigan State though which might make Spartan fans feel better is Mel Tucker is five and two coming off of a loss when he's been the coach at Michigan State and in six of those seven games Michigan State has been the underdog and Michigan State is obviously again won five of the seven games so if you are looking for something to kind of boost your spirits there you go. yeah and you know don't take too much away from last week we have lost I think 13 straight Pac-10 Pac-12 road games Michigan State just does not seem to do well west of the Rockies and uh, it played out again last week it would be nice this week if we could hear Jacoby Winman's name called a couple times that means the defense is doing its job hey Ryan Griffin here thank you so much for watching today's episode of Griffin and Bats be sure to give us your thoughts in the comments below remember to click the bell to receive the latest notifications from DSN and subscribe for breaking news community blogs polls contests and other content